Hello people, how are you doing? I'm busy a damn good day. Welcome back to the channel and today we will be going over Xavi Hernandez's Barcelona tactics in EA FC 24. So we'll start off at the top with Roberto Lewandowski as the striker. We've got Schwa Felix as the left wing. We've got Rafinha as the right wing. We've got Gundogan, Romeo and uh, Frankie de Jong in the midfield. We've got Christensen and Kunde as the two centre-backs. Cancelo and Balde as the full-backs. And they've got to stake in between the sticks. On the substitute bench, we've got Torres, Gavi, Pedri, Araujo, Pena, Roberto, and Martinez. And then in the reserves, we've got Alonso, Fall, um, Alacron. Yeah, a bunch of players that I, I've never heard of in my entire life. So with the formation, it is a 4-3-3 holding. One goalkeeper, two centre-backs, two full-backs, one DM, two central midfielders, one striker, and then two wingers. In terms of replicating and reproducing what you see in real life in the game of EAFC 24, I've gone with a defensive style of press after possession loss, so you will look to try and maintain the ball as much as possible, but when you do lose it, you will look to try and win it back, implementing a nice press, trying to throw off the opposition with their offensive movements and their offensive flow going forward, and that's more or less how you can try to do so. As for the team width, it is hit to 60, it's a more of a man-to-man -man type system, try and go you know, shoulder to shoulder at times, but it also allows you to try and intercept and clog those passing lanes for all those stray passes that the opposition might try and, you know, play in or anything like that. So more bodies up front, a more widespread um, field when trying to win that ball back. Like I said, clog the passing lanes, you will intercept a lot more um, balls and it does allow you to regain possession a lot faster. And then as for the depth, it is set to 90. It's a very, very high line. So you are susceptible to those balls and over the top but what I can say is if you are in control of the game and you do maintain the ball as much as possible and you are pressing the team when you do lose the ball, they will try and hoof the ball up the field and try and just alleviate the pressure on themselves. And that's more or less where your center backs come to play or your full backs in certain moments. They'll try and win that ball back early, circulate it back into the midfield and then you go again and you try and attack the opposition. But like I say, you are susceptible to the counter attack. So be very wary when using it. I would say and I would suggest that if you are playing a team like a PSG with an Mbappe or a potential Real Madrid, I would suggest you drop it down to around 70. So you still maintain a, a high line or even a 75. That way you still maintain a high line, but you will also have the ability to adapt and be a bit more pragmatic when playing against an opposition with fast pacey players up front. As for the offense, I've set it to slow build up and possession. Now it's a ticky tucker system. You do want your players to be able to hit those little quick five yard passes interchanging, pass and move, pass and move, and more or less, you do want to try and maintain possession over the course of the game. So you don't want to have players running, sprinting out of position, um, trying to get up the field as fast as possible with the fast paced build up. You don't want those long balls being nailed into them. You want to try and maintain the ball, be in control of the game, and a slow build up with a possession base. Uh, chance creation is what you can use in order to create and replicate that style. Now, as for the width, it is set to 35. You want to try and make sure your team is nice and compact, nice and narrow for those quick five yard passes. The whole system revolves around a lot of um, players being close to each other, little tight spaces, trying to get out of those spaces, little passing triangles. And like I said, that is how you can replicate that in the game. As for players in the box, I have set it to HER, trying to overload the box in certain moments, trying to generate and create space for your striker, in this case it's Robert Lewandowski. You do want to have at least one fullback in that box, the opposite fullback more times than not, trying to make that late back post run. Your other forwards are going to be your wingers, they're going to be in and around there, and then potentially sometimes it won't be the fullback, it might be a midfielder that does make that advancing run deep into the box for the cross. But more times than not, your midfield will be in and around that the edge of the box area waiting for that loose ball to be fired out to them or potentially trying to circulate possession and probe and wait for gaps in the defense as for corners and free kicks as always it is set to four so we'll start off with the goalkeeper for the instructions mark andre to stegen he is said to come for crosses and be a sweeper keeper very calm collected with the ball at his feet very capable of spraying those passes out to the wingers or even to the fullbacks at times he does like to start the offensive build up from the back more times than not if the ball is fired into him and it's in his hands he'll look to try and pass it out to the fullbacks and get them going higher up the field as well as for kunde and christensen they are set to their base set of instructions uh you don't really want to mess with any of that because it does lead to holes in your defense and then it leads to goals conceded so that's why i've gone with the base set of instructions for that as for Cancelo and Boulder, they have slightly differing roles. Cancelo is said to join the attack in inverts. Now, I can't remember which game it was. It may have been against Real Sociedad. No, not Real Sociedad. 
um, Real Betis, where I saw Cancelo start as a right back, drift all the way over to the left-hand side and interchange um, passes with the likes of Balde and it may have been Charles Felix at the time. So you do want him to invert into that midfield. You do want him to link up play quite nicely with the midfield at certain moments, but you also want him to have a nice attacking out there as well, which is why we've gone with him to invert and join the attack and then as well as step up. Now, I know step up on the defensive side of things, it just makes them more aggressive, makes them more imposing on the opposition's um, forward that is on that side. But what I've also found is, especially with FIFA, and I'm pretty sure it's very similar in EAFC 24, when you have step up, they do tend to get a lot higher up the field and almost play as a wing back at times without having their position be a wing back. And then on the left hand side, we have got Balde. He's here to join the attack and overlap as well as stick to position. You do want him to generate that space down the left hand side for Shaw Felix, who will not be a winger out and out. He will be more of an inside forward, trying to stay as close to the likes of Lewandowski as possible, operating in that little half space area. And in order to generate that space, you need a full back to bomb on down the left hand side hold the width in the team on that left flank and be able to whip in those crosses and supply your forward line as well. Um, and then also he's said to stick to position, like I said earlier, slightly different role to Cancelo, but a very effective one nonetheless. And as for Ariel Romeo, he's said to cut passing and stay back while attacking normal interceptions. You do want him to man that hole. You don't want him to be too aggressive and step out of position at times. You want him to protect that back line more times than not, breaking up play, passing it on, you will see he, when you do watch him in real life, he does tend to just be the thorn in the, the opposition side, more times than not, getting into the positions, intercepting those passes, cutting out the certain acute angled passes that the um, offense will throw at you, and then just spraying it off to either a Frankie de Jong or Pedri or a Gundogan in this situation. And then he's here to cover the center. Like I say, he's going to man that hole, stay in front of the back line at times, and just make sure that he's protecting it protecting them more times than not. Moving slightly on higher up the field, we've got Frankie de Jong. He's set to stay back while attacking, stay on the edge of the box. Normal interceptions are set to be on, cover the wing and then free roam. You do want him to pop up in those little pockets of space that are created by your quick passing movements. Like I say, it's quick five yard passes, be nice, compact and narrow. And he will look to try and be that outlet player in times, looking for those spaces in the midfield, generating space for others by creating overloads in certain areas. You do want him to stay, stay back while attacking and stay on the edge of the box as well. Stay back while attacking. What I had hoped this would do is, and he does do it effectively, is he drops slightly deeper, collects the ball off the, of the back four, and then he drives it on into the midfield. It's not really a Romeo job that he will do. He's more of the destroyer. He'll look to try and break a play, whereas Frankie Dion, he's the more of the facilitator in the team. He'll look to collect the ball off the back four, drop a shoulder, turn, drive it on into the midfield, creating overloads again and then try to generate passes into the, the wider areas of the field, either a Schwal Felix or a Rafinha or even your fullbacks in certain situations. Um, and then stay on the edge of the box, you want him, Gundogan and Romeo circulating the ball, trying to probe and find passes into the danger area, trying to supply your forward line or anybody who's looking to attack the ball with a better opportunity. And then we've got the other man, the other number eight. We've got Gundogan here, said to have a balanced attack, stand the edge box as well. Like I say, you want to try and help facilitate the offense on the edge of the box of your opponent. Um, and that's why Frankie De Jong and Gundogan or Pedri or Gavi are all very, very important to the system. As for the interceptions, it is set to normal, cover the wing and then stick to position. So he will be more of the box to box. He will look to be that midfielder that sometimes breaks into the box having that extra overload in certain areas, having that extra body in there in certain moments. We'll start off on the right hand side, Rafinha, he is said to have a basic defensive support, so he will just sometimes hold back, but we know that Xavi, he likes to have his forward line nice and high up the field, waiting for the potential counter attack that might be sprung, or potentially just having his forwards nice and spread out, having a bit more space in the midfield in certain moments, because it is a nice compact formation, so you do want to have some space generated um, and that is what Rafinha can do. Of course, he is here to stay wide and come short. So when you do have the ball, he will look to come inside a bit more, link up play with the likes of uh, Joao Cancelo, Gundogan, and Romeo, even a Frankie Dion in certain moments, creating an overload in the midfield. Um, stay wide, he can have that 1v1 situation on the right, on the wide right flank. That's a tongue twister, I'm sorry. But the wide right flank have that 1v1 situation with the opposition's fullback. Drive left, drive right. Uh, whooping those crosses or potentially take shots off for himself. As for um, support on crosses, it's said to balance as well. So he won't always look to get into the box. He will to sometimes facilitate on the edge of the box, waiting for a cross potentially, or linking up play with the likes of the Gundogan and Frankie De Jong as well in the opponent's um, offensive 
or defensive technical area. And then we will move over to the left-hand side, Schwa Felix. He has got a slightly differing role to if you had Ferran Torres in here, which I will go over fairly, fairly soon. But as for Schwa Felix, he is said to have a basic defensive support. Like I say, he's also not going to always help back, but he can do it sometimes. It's also going to help generate space in that midfield area, not trying to overcrowd anything either. As for chance creation, though, it is set to free roam, so you do want him to have a bit more of a freer role, roaming in and out, staying wide sometimes, coming inside a bit more, linking up play with the midfield in certain moments, and that's what you want from him. And then, as for support runs, he's set to come short, like I say, you want him to drop into that midfield in certain moments, stay nice and close, and this is what you can do to try and get him as close to Lewandowski as possible, having him feed off of Lewandowski and the little one-two passes around the corner um, movements and, and so on. Um, so that's why I've gone with him to come short as well. And then get into the box. You do want your left-hand side forward, in this case it's Schwab Felix, to be able to always be in the box with the likes of Robert Lewandowski, adding another body in the offensive area. And then we've got Robert Lewandowski here set to have a support run set to balance. So he will sometimes look to drift slightly wider, but he will look to operate and man that main centre forward role, the, the number nine, take up the central role more times and not be the target man in certain moments, linking up play quite nicely. But a key feature that I did note was, and I did see this quite a bit with the Real Batiste game, he did drop off drawing out the opposition centre backs, opening up holes and space for the midfield and the wingers to operate into, exploiting that area as well. And it's a very nice tactic that Xavi has used very effectively with the likes of Robert Lewandowski. Of course, he is getting older, so the opposition, they're not going to be as inclined to stay with him all the time, but when he does drop off and they do follow him, the, the amount of space that Barca then try to exploit is crazy, crazy good. So if you were to start the likes of Ferran Torres as the left wing, this would be the set of instructions I would go with. Have a defensive support set to basic. You do want him to have the similar role to what Rafinha has on the, on the right-hand side. As for the chance creation, it is set to balance. Because you have the likes of Balde bombing on, down that left hand side more times than not you do want him to have a bit more freedom so he can have those wider attacking threats or he could look to cut inside and come a bit shorter linking up play with the likes of frankie de jong as for the support runs it is said to get in behind you do want him to try and exploit that back line space that they will leave in behind and um, playing on the edge of, of the the defense at times or the opposition's defense at times trying to make sure that they are kept on their toes stretching the the back line in certain moments on a vertical scale and then as for support on crosses, again, very similar to Rafinha, it is said to uh, the balanced approach because you do want him to sometimes help facilitate with the likes of Frankie Dion, Gundogan and Rafinha, or he will look to try and make those advancing runs into the box, being more of a, a, an offensive attacking player. So yes, my dudes, that is my version of Xavi Hernandez's 4-3-3 tactics at Barcelona in EAFC 24. Now, if you can do me the biggest favor, hit the like button, that would be great. Hit the subscribe button, that would be even better. But most importantly, hit that video there, you might enjoy it. And I hope you guys have a damn great day. I'm out.